take notes. Steve Zengit, everybody. Thank you. According to Wikipedia, <laughs> perseverance means continuing in a course of action without regard to discouragement, opposition, or previous failure. I'm going to leave this slide up for a second because we're going to talk about a few of these things during this next 20 minutes. I want to start with a quote. I live my life like there's no tomorrow. This was spoken by one of the geniuses of my childhood, David Lee Roth. I started Zeke in 1995, right at the beginning of the internet. We started as a CD-ROM company and we quickly formed ourselves into a casual games company, and that's what we did throughout the 90s. In 2000, I hired several animators from CalArts, and we were starting to make some of our own original animation. We had our client work, we were working on some of our own products, and then March of 2000 happened. Does anybody know what happened in March of 2000? The NASDAQ crashed, tanked. Pick your synonym. Now, I didn't have a lot of dot-com clients, but the entire industry was gone overnight. I couldn't get my clients on the phone. We couldn't get paid. We were done. And so I had to do the toughest thing that ever happened in my career. I laid off 12 people in one day. Now, if you've ever heard me speak, I've talked about firing employees. And that's hard. But typically, if somebody's gotten to the point where they need to be fired, it's deserved. Laying off is the hardest thing you will ever do as a business owner. And if you've never done it, I guarantee that. And so, I dusted myself off. I found the clients that would return my calls, the ones who still had money. I moved my business home into my garage, and I became a one-man shop. And there was a project that I was working on that needed database work, and I wasn't a database programmer. So I called my friend Eddie Hartman. Eddie Hartman started a company called LegalZoom. Uh, his Twitter handle, I believe, is at CakeFart. My memory might be fuzzy on that one. Um, and Eddie came in, and he taught me how to program databases. And I sat there night after night, and lost, I uh, got no sleep, and I fulfilled this project. Because that's what it took to keep my company afloat. And you know what Eddie said to me after it was all done? He said, Steve, you've got moxie. You've got gumption. Or again, pick any synonym for perseverance. But that stuck with me. Now, complacency isn't exactly the opposite of perseverance, but it is in my world. And so, because I went through that, I live my life like there's no tomorrow. That's how I run my business. I know what it's like to lose everything and to have to start over. So every day I go in and I look at the financials and I look at the cushion and I look at how we're doing and I'm always on my toes and thinking about what happens if all of our clients are gone tomorrow? Because it does happen. And I promise you, you can't know what that feels like unless you go through it.
don't call it a comeback. I've been here for years. <laughs> so this comes from one of the greatest thinkers of our time, Mr. LL Cool J, who, in my mind, is one of the best examples I can think of of perseverance. So LL started as a rapper when he was 16 in 1984. He cut four albums, and he did pretty well, but he wasn't great. He wasn't at the top of the charts. But you know what he did? He just kept going. And it wasn't until he came out with Mama Said Knock You Out until he won his first Grammy in 1992, after eight years in the business. LL didn't quit then. He reinvented himself. He started acting in movies. He's been in TV. And now you can see him in NCIS, which has been on for several seasons. That's perseverance. That's longevity. So several people in this room I look to as the LL Cool J's of WordPress. Kareem Maruki has been in this business as long as I have, selling client services for 21 years. Chris Ford was up here earlier and she talked about how she graduated design school in 1996. Tony Perez started in 2000. That's longevity. Chris Lemma was taking Clarity FM calls in the womb. <laughs> Again, my memory might be fuzzy on that one. <clears throat> so let's talk about the hustle, since we're talking about Mr. LL Cool J. This is what it takes. <sighs> There's something my dad used to say to me, and it used to drive me nuts. He used to say, there's no free lunch. And I hated it. Because what it meant was, you've got to work for everything you have. Nobody's going to give you shit. You don't deserve anything. You've got to work for it. And this really didn't resonate with me until I started my business. Because I didn't make a dime for two years. I thought, I'll go talk about, I'm going to date myself here, Macromedia Director, to anybody who would listen, and they're going to hand me checks. That's not how it works. It takes hard work to succeed. There are no free lunches. Nobody's handing out anything. <clears throat> Does anybody remember a, uh, a Michael Douglas, Sean Penn movie called The Game? Okay. So, Zeke Interactive got an RFP to build the website for the game in 1998-ish. And we loved this script. I had a business partner at the time named Dan Wall, and we read the script, and we were totally into it. We wanted this project. And so we put together an amazing proposal and an amazing website, and we described this awesome project and we only had one competitor. And so what we did to be creative and show Polygram that we were creative is we sent out our initial email that said, Zeke Interactive has decided to pass on this project. And then we sent out a follow-up email that said, your game has begun. And we led them on an adventure to find our proposal. They didn't read the second email. <laughs> this is a true story. The other agency got the project. This was a $100,000 project. I call that a mistake. I don't get creative with proposals anymore. 
My proposals are very clear, and it's very clear how to find them. <laughs> and I'm sending a, do a Word doc, and a PDF, and a link to a Google doc, and following it up with a fax. <laughs> and then following up with a phone call to make sure you got my proposal. My point is, you're going to make mistakes. I promise you, we all do it. I've done it several times, I still do it. But if you don't learn from those mistakes, you've got issues. <clears throat> Never burn a bridge, and again, this is a quote straight out of my dad's rule book. I don't care who it is. I don't care how you've been treated. I don't care what happened on the other side of the table. Treat everyone with respect and treat everybody with the attitude of you have no idea where they're going to end up or who they're going to talk to or what they're going to tweet, or what kind of Yelp review they're going to review they're going to leave. We lost out on a really big project recently. Um, it was a quick one. It probably wasn't the right fit, but it's a project that Sarah and I really, really wanted. We traveled for it. We spent a lot of time on the proposal, and in the end, they said we're going to keep the agency that we're already working with. We have another we have a relationship with another agency and. So I sent an email, and I said, go after yourself. Go, that's not what happened. <laughs> I sent an email, and I said, thank you very much for this opportunity. I really appreciate it. If there's anything we can ever do for you in the future, for you in the future, please let us know. In my 21 years of experience, I've worked with several clients, and they've gone from one large company to another large company, or from a small company to a large company, and they've taken us along with them. So no matter what you do, take the high road. No matter how the relationship ends, take the high road. You don't know where that person's gonna end up. You don't know who they're going to refer you. So never burn a bridge. The thing I learned from what happened in, in March of 2000 is that you should always diversify. And what this means is, if you have one large client and one large project that you're working on, you might want to review that. Because if that client pulls out, you're dead meat. It's much better to have a lot of small projects that you're juggling. If you're a product company and you have one large product, you might want to review, review that. Get some other SKUs. Explore some other verticals. It's important. This is the way you protect yourself if anything goes wrong. I've talked about this rule in many, many talks. One thing I've always done and I believe has really kept me in business is I've always done my best to surround myself with good people. They represent me. It's an extension of, of me. So when my people are talking to a client or they're at a word camp or they're anywhere and representing Zeke, I want the best representation that, that, that there is. And I also strive to hire people that are smarter than me. And along those same lines, reputation is king. I make most of my decisions based on how it's going to affect my reputation. It's what's gotten me this far. We're not perfect. Zeke is not a perfect agency, but we have a great reputation of treating our clients right, delivering on time, delivering on budget, delivering. 
And I say that because we've picked up a lot of our projects from other developers that just didn't deliver. If you're not good at networking, this is something you're gonna to need to figure out. You're here at a WordCamp. Talk to people. Figure out your circle and network within that circle. But networking is very important. And again, it's another skill I got from my dad. It's how I got ahead in this business. It's how I got ahead in every industry I've been in, in, in within digital. I do my best to talk to people and just figure out what's going on. Because ultimately, that leads to sales. And my friends make fun of me, and that's okay. But coffee is for closers. Second place is, second place is a set of steak knives. Third place, you're fired. Does anybody not know what movie this is from? I am always closing. I am always selling. But I do it in a way which is not a hard sell. I sell by networking. I sell by talking to people. When somebody talks to me, they know what I do, and they start talking about an app idea or, or a project they've got going on or something that's going on in their company. And so that's where I steer the conversation. So if you don't know who David Lee Roth is or who LL Cool J is, then I've chosen a quote that the under 30-somethings can relate to. Don't do nothing lest your heart's in it. Don't do nothing lest you're all in it. And of course, this is from the greatest motivational speaker of your time, Justin Bieber. In 1980, I got a Trash 80. 80, 80 or 81, I got a Trash 80. This was my first computer. That's what it looked like. It connected to the TV. And that was cool. And I got to play games on it. And then I figured out that there was a way for you to write software on this thing. But what really changed, actually, let me take a step back. Raise your hand if you owned a cassette tape. Keep them up if you owned a leaderless cassette tape. That's a leaderless cassette recorder. And what that did is it allowed you to save your programs off of the Trash 80. It never worked right, like a jazz desk. I'm segmenting the audience by age right now. <laughs> But it allowed me to write programs, save them to leaderless cassettes, and then come back to them later so that I can add to them. And I didn't know it at the time, but I was learning code. And what Mr. Bieber was talking about in his quote is passion. It's important that you know your passions. My passions are movies, music, basketball, poker, and technology. That Trash 80 gave me a passion for technology. I'm gonna leave you with this. It's important that you ask yourself why you're sitting in this room. It's important that you ask yourself, why am I in this industry? And if the first answer that came to your mind had anything to do with money or paycheck, I encourage you to do some self-reflection. Passion is critical. It's critical to your success, it's critical to your longevity, and it's critical to perseverance. 
I'm Steve Zengit.